Here we go. It's my birthday, so I'm doing what I want to. Yeah, part of it would actually be popping over to Elios and doing some grinding to, to work out a few things. His things, besides the fact I was going to do after finishing the MSQ here in Eskes, go over to Elios and go through each every single job quest. The only thing is, I've still got a lot of grind to that, so I could show you some of that grind, but what fun would that be? So instead, I'm going to do something else. Uh, the resistance. So these are the relics of um, Shadowbringers. And it's connected to I need to go to I remember where this starts. Let's double check. Oh. On. I actually need to complete this quest. Which involves me uh, doing the final alliance raid of Stormblood. Story wise, they're kind of connected. And those things now, it's like, oh, what do I need to do? Well, let's check on my squadron. I don't think they're doing anything. Uh, 
I have to stick to training courses for the moment. Please. Can't do export deliveries right now because I got it. Let's check on my or uh, um, see if we got quests. Oh, fishing quests I can do. Actually, you know what? I got an idea. A brand spanking new idea. Let's let's learn some character crafting professions. And a hammering to bring you beginning from the street, did it, lad? Well, uh, that you find the din, din of finding as the armor's guild is not the place for, for a quiet reverie. If the clangor of metal, metal striking metal, metal is music to your ears, may help you with the spirit of shipwright. If you are mind to join our guild, guild, take it to me, take it from me, lad. There's no greater joy than working a sheepless lump of iron into a shiny breastplate with your own hands. What say you then? Well then, that. Now you will cover a, a bit of guild history for, for forging ahead with the formalities. The armor's, armor's craft is an offshoot of blacksmithing. Time was when armors and smithies were one and the same. But as the years trickled down, the techniques of working sheet metal into armor plates became a specialized trade. And the smithies who showed uncommon skill and passion for this trade earned themselves the time of armor. Now, as you probably imagine, the skills necessary for making armor are needed for shipbuilding. But building ships is a bit hard, harder than knocking out simple helms, which led these armorers, who were good enough to work on boats, to claim the title of shipwright. Of course, it was one thing calling. And the armorers, armorers, blacksmiths, and, and shipwrights armorers, but it's... But it's quite another for calling shipwrights blacksmiths, because building a ship and making a hatchet and it can be more different. It seems as though a line needed drawn, and seeing as how Limsa Lamincer was built on the strength of a navy, you can imagine why the armorers chose to cut their ties from the smithies 
and establish a guild of their own. As for the smith smitties, well, the whole notion of the independent armorers guild never did sit well with them, and there has been a fair, fair old rivalry between the two factions ever since. Always trying to outdo each other, we are. Which is why we are, we're ever on the lookout for new talent to help us keep the smitty bastards in their place. All you need to do is impress the Forge Master, and we can start you with their training. Be warned, for Major Hazana, his tongue can strip the scales off a fishback at forty paces. Seeing that, you will find a fairer mistress aside of the state of Mirathor. Uh, let me know when your own muster the courage to speak with them. I'll let I'll see to the rest. Mine is made up. You're ready to throw your lot with another uh, summers? Well, I'm going to do blacksmith too. And it's time you made made yourself known to the forge master. That's no empty title, by the way. Son is a renowned shipwright and one of the finest crafters in Limsa Hide. Head outside, and you'll find her blistering the skins of our newest initiates. Another aspiring armor, are you? Welcome, I'm Zana, Fort Master of the Guild. I take it, Gwantko. Wanako. Let's explain to you the history and nature of our craft. Good. There's little to add to a, to that front, save this. Laughing on armor is not an easy one. Day after day, we pitch flesh and blood against iron, uh, iron and flame, and without a passion of the forge, you'll fail. Mm, but passion alone will not make it an armor for you. To truly master the craft, you must be possessed with a will of unyielding as the metals you work. Knowing what lies before you, you have the fortitude and, and perseverance. You have the fortitude to persevere. You have the for fortitude to persevere. Ah, I see you have no fear of hard work. That is well. Consider your request to join the guild approved. But if you ever ever give me aught less than your best, then you will be out the door before you realize your boot was my boot was connected with your backside. Are we clear on that? Good. Now that we understand each other, let us begin with the basics. What is your name? Esagos, very well. Esagos, this tool called a Dalmina hammer. Here, grip it firm. Note its weight. Let me know when you feel comfortable with it in your hand. Are you either holding it properly? There we go. Oh. Ah, yes. If I didn't know any better, I think you were an armorer, let's go. Of course, I do know better. Um, until you're craftsably in, uh, with that hammer of yours. It looked like a babe with a rattle to me, and no intention of mothering you. Make no mistake, I mean to shape you into an artisan, whatever, however hard I have to pound. Save your, save your sweat for the forge, lad. I don't expect you to fashion full suits of plate, plate on your first day. Pay close attention to my instructions, be diligent of your work, and the skill will come in due time. Now, be with your first lesson, shall we? 
I want you to take up your hammer and give me a bronze ingot. A mundane task, I grant you, but one which, which every armor must master. Bronze, you see, is the most basic material of the craft, and bronze ingots are its building blocks. It is not the strongest for always, of course, but it is but it is that very quality that makes bronze so easy to shape. And the metal of choice for a novice armor. To forge your ingot, you will need to procure two chunks of of copper ore, a chunk of tin ore, and an ice shard. The ore can be purchased from Summer Wib here in the Summer Wib. Yeah. Yeah, at the, the guild at the archive, you'll have to find on your own. Well, are you waiting for me to swing swing your arm for you, or may happen you would have me swing my boot? And then one tin order. They're cheap. I level two armor. Where's that browning it as for? If you can't find the order itself, I'm gonna try to speak with some rubid there here at the here at the guild. Oh, I mean this one. They did your task, have you? Well then, let's have a look at this ingot. Hmm. Is this the sort of quality I can expect from you? Is it? For well, novel summer, this is excellent work. Excellent. Well done, as it goes. The key to making good bronze, bronze is judging the ratio of copper to tin. With, with too much tin, the alloy becomes harder and allows us more brit also more brittle. Not the sort of material you want protecting your vital organs. Lest you forget, qual quality is a matter of life and death in our craft, which is why we teach our initiates that ideal metallurgic composition of every item we forge. Not that all are quick to learn. There are some who seem destined to produce mediocre results, however painstakingly the process is. Plus, as I explained. Thank you, the builder. You have not one, one of them. I am pleased to say that your ingot has fetched a decent price in the markets. But do not let this first success make you complacent. A single bad helm will lose you more trust than a hundred good ones will win. win. Because bad armor means dead men. It is not enough for your work to be good. It must needs be consistently good. And achieving, the, achieving that consistency requires discipline and long hours of crafting the same item over and over and over again. Again and again. For you, this means, means a mountain of bronze ingots. Bronze ingots in your dreams. Bronze ingots until, you, until the process is so ingrained that you wake up and find that your pillow is an ingot. You made it in your sleep. When you feel like you have learned all you have about bronzing, forging bronze ingots, seek me out or I'll find you something else to craft. May the builder guard your hand as it goes. We're on to a 30 minute wait on the, the Orbun board, Orbun Monastery. Unless you're blind and deaf, I suppose. Uh, I presume you're wandering into a forge in your own record, drawn by the sound song of our Smitty's Hammers. No doubt. In these uh, easy old halls, limbs are 
Limsa's finest pa- pound metal into all manner of tools and weapons. And when I say Limsa's, I mean the whole bloody realms. Make no mistake, you need more than a good arm to join our ranks. And if you got iron in your veins and the builder's blessing, speak up. Hey, well, I'm not short on confidence. But do you truly know what... Oh, wait. Now we're here to do what we want to. <laughs> what are we meant to? Assuming that final healer says yes. Here we are. Not sure how positive this is. People are already dying and we're just on the first set of trash. Impressive. I'd absolutely deserve any of your accolades, but to do not. Do you have an answer for this? This mist? Or is it either? This all seems familiar, like back in the Marita Rama. Marita Rama. Oh, this guy. I can never remember how to do this.
<laughs> Somebody doing an air we attack? Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna die because I got a three stacks of vulnerability for the next three seven seconds. I can't remember how to dodge this. Well, at least I don't have the vulnerability up by debuffs anymore. Uh, it's like the second time that I've been rest. I hate this fight so much. It always seems like the last uh, alliance raid in for each expansion. Uh,
Youth guides your fate, but have you the faith to fulfill his legacy? of life we succumb. It's judgment swift and final. It's bite as cold as steel. Seven fates foretold, yet at the end of the broken path lies death, and death alone! Oh shit. The dreams of men are fleeting, yet they must be embraced if they are to flourish. Have you the faith to do as much? I'm terrible at this. Well, shit.
That's not her move. Oh, somebody already started the fight. Look, if there's a countdown, you don't attack. And especially if you're not the tank. Dreams of men are fleeting, yet they must be embraced if they are to flourish. Have you the faith to do as much?
Boss was defeated. Got it that time. Oh, I hate this one. Your coming was foretold, servant of evil. There be. Or perhaps you serve another. I am Count Sidolphus Orlando. Your journey ends here.
It's that, that pompadour that, that he's, he's wearing. Where are you going? You were right there. Jeez. to the skies and tremble as the brilliance of a thousand bolts blinds mine enemies and tears their flesh asunder. To the current of life we succumb, its judgment swift and final, its bite as cold as steel. held high. Such is poor cover for when the heavens fall. Come, show me more. Seven shadows cast, seven shakes foretold. Yet at the end of the broken path lies death and death alone. To die by the sword. There is time enough for regret in the flames of hell. Whole is the blade that severs the villain's head. Endless is the path that leads him from hell. Well, that was unfortunate.
is in balance. And now the scales will Oh, and I die anyways. <laughs> Wasn't healed enough enough. beckons a lifetime of pain. All right, LB3, LB3, LB3. All right. You will find my defenses quite impenetrable. of ruin rise above the storm's discord. Shudder not in her endless cold. Can't see it. Impetuous 
Is it sanctum you seek, my way with children? Or perhaps you are come in search of power? That which lies at your feet, that blessed bauble can grant you both. You need but when it's so. Now, take salvation and be gone mortal agency in matters divine shall not be suffered You shall rue the day you raised your eyes to the heavens. Kneel before me. Your very soul shall not escape my wrath. Sands of the abyss, from ink of black is night, I suffer.
Oops. Your very soul shall not escape my wrath. Death awaits defiance. of life before rising to the heavens in a cleansing conflagration of divine benevolence. We might be able to recover this even though we don't have an LB3. We need res mage. Well, we tried. Of the abyss from ink of black is not. I saw you. 
Denizens of the Abyss, from Ink of Blackest Night, I saw you. Your very soul shall not escape my wrath. Death awaits defiance. Oh no! <laughs> Your very soul shall not escape my wrath. Kneel before me. Denizens of the Abyss, from Ink of Blackest Night, I saw you.
bend to my will. Denizens of the Abyss, from Ink of Blackest Night, I summon. Your very soul shall not escape my wrath. There we go. Yay! I got nothing. Everybody rolled better than me. Took an hour and a half to get all that done from when I started streaming, so. Crimson. You're awake, Koopo? But is it truly really him?
Thank you. Thank you for all for coming to my aid. Ah, the original Remza. You are my thanks, noble warrior of light. You have achieved what I could not. You bear my blood and the blood of House Durai. Thank you for seeing my final wish fulfilled. My sacrifice has finally been given meaning. All right, friends, let us retire to Mother Heidelin's bosom. We may finally rest. Farewell, you are the true heroes of this story. Alita? Oh, I have missed you, old friend. Forgive me, Ramsa. You deserve better than what history gave you. I could have done more. I could be sorry. These countless centuries did I long for the day that we would meet once again, and now this time is finally come. Heidelin Bex us both. Let's go back to the Prima Vista.
I'm so sorry, Ramza Alma. I convinced myself my research was the most important thing in my life, all the while you two were standing before me. You find it in my your hearts to forgive your father. It's all right. We are still here, are we not? And we triumphed. We proved your theory true. Evil this existed. Ramza existed, and Oren Durai is not a heretic, but a hero. Now all that remains is tell the world. No mess on we haven't but ourselves further. Father, we cannot allow our ancestors' name to remain. And we will not. Yet, simply put, not in the manner we think. I shall be adding a final act to the Zodiac, Bra Zodiac Brave story, telling of how Remza, the forgotten hero, and his chronicler Oren de Rye, smote the Angel of Blood and save Ivelisse from an Age of Darkness, before quietly embarking on a final journey that would take them far beyond the horizon. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course, I shall not leave out those nameless heroes who fought alongside Remza, uh, without whom the young noble would would have surely perished. Is that what you truly want, Father, for the story to end? It is only it will only end on the stage, my dear, and live on in the hearts of the crowd. King Delita and Orin envisioned the Virgo as a beacon which which would lead future generations to the truth about the founding of their kingdom. They were right. And just as the pendants guided us, now we shall guide the masses through our play. Now you see, my son. I would offer you my thanks again, Eskos, but thanks to not nearly to thanks are not nearly enough to express my gratitude for all you have given us. Perhaps after I complete the Zodiac Brave story, I can pen a tale about the legendary Warrior of Light and his ventures across the Great Three Continents. And you have your work cut out for you, my friend. Eskos has enough battles under his belt to fill at least three, three tomes, if not four. Would you stop doing that, Sid? His tale is far from over, isn't it? Hey. Alright, this is our final dress rehearsal for the night. Make it count. Positions, everyone. Guess principle. Lights, music. There'll be no more mistakes from you two. Am I clear? Mother crystal clear, Koopa. They're going to perform their new final act. Begin. Whatever will you do, the church has bred us heretics. No home awaits us in Ivelisse. We shall embark on a journey. A journey together. Together? Together the crystal's call has been answered and evil vanquished from the land. We are now free to sword like the griffin. Free? But how? By casting off our noble names and forging a new path, one not bound by fate. And on that path we shall meet new friends, make a new family. 
And on that path we shall the winner. And on to them we shall entrust the true tale of our deeds, that they may carry upon our legacy for all eternity. Sword in hand, a warrior clutches stone to breast. In sword etched he his faded memories. In stone he tempered his skill. By sword tested, by stone revealed. The tale can now be told. Yeah, I didn't think that was that great. Bravo, bravo, you both were wonderful. Eh, you're not much of a critic, are you? Oh, well, we'll clap anyways. Give you give you encouragement. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with Lady Milrotha's uh, sentiments, and there is always room for improvement. Back to your positions, everyone, again from the top. Again? I've had enough of this. I were promised a starring role, Kuboi. <laughs> it's in my contract. Oh, hush, brother, before Janamis <laughs> has us back to policy boot buckles again. <laughs> I have to admit, it is a little, uh, Corny. I think that's the fun in it. Meanwhile, the clockwork city of Gog, Goog. Well, so further research will be required to reach a positive conclusion, but preliminary tests show the technology utilized here bears striking similarities to our own. Excellent. Let the Aorsians play with their baubles. True power lies within these very walls. It appears our ancestors were as cunning as they were ruthless. A weapon powerful enough to carve a gateway to the land's very core. His radiance will be eager to test this Tartarus. Tartarus, wouldn't you all agree? Well, wasn't that an adventure, I suppose? I decided to think we will soon part ways, but with all that, we have already these past few moons. Satisfied with the city's unwillingness to turn him over to the Guardians, Jonas has decided to purchase a permanent berth above Kugane for the Prima Vista. Supposedly, he has already received petitions from hundreds of Geico and Gaiin to join the company. And then there are a matter of my assignment. You will be delighted to learn that I am almost finished. 
how do you expect one to write an expose off battling forces of evil from beyond the void? Don't you worry, though. A few more weeks and I'll have my draft. All right. An outline. Until then, I'll stay here in Kugane a while longer. As the Ravens... At the Ravens' expense, of course. Farewell. All right, now that I've gotten that taken care of, here it is. All of that hour <laughs> forty minutes of of work, and now I got the quest I want. Talking to this guy. Rogadin, who, uh, Rogadin. I like saying Rogadin. That's just how I pronounce it. I think it's Rogadin, but Rogadin. My lord, uh, my, uh, what uh, auspicious timing. I intended to send a message to the Rising Stones, but it seems it's no longer necessary. Master Hancock wishes to speak to you regarding a matter of grave import. I can but imagine what other duties yet to matter your attention. Still, he would request that you meet him at the Ruby Bazaar, your earliest convenience. Now, based off of the quest starting music course, this is a Shadowbringer's quest. I'm also going to go over to the Wandering Minstrel here and quickly grab some uh, yeah, extreme trials. That's right, I haven't completed the Four Lords. Up over to the Ruby Bazaar. Ah, he returns at last. From what Tataru has told me, we'd rather we'd come a rather long way, to put it mildly. And while the Scions remained locked in slumber, she sought aid for all corners of the realm. In fact, it was I whom she first turned while searching for a champion to assist her in her absence. Though, as she, you have no doubt surmised, I did not call you here to discuss matters. I received word from Lord Hien that the Bajan resistance, as com comrades in the Eastern Alliance, seek the aid of our comrades in the Eastern Alliance, seek the aid of the distinguished heroes in their fight against the Empire, and naturally your name immediately sprang to mind. Indeed, from a small nation found in the southern reaches of Il Ilzabad uh, to, the, to the west of Dalmasca, they are no doubt among the first to fall to the Empire, yet it would seem their hearts have yet to give way to despair. With the Empire now in disarray, they would seize the opportunity to fight back. If it would know the details in full, I think it's best you speak with Lord Yen. His endless list of commitments makes him a hard man to find, however, so perhaps you had have one of his attendants at the House of the Fears track him down for you. Hey, have you seen Lord Yen? Greetings, good sir. Lord Yen has been expecting you. When word reached us from the Baljan resistance, Lord Yen knew at once that there was just but one man to whom he could turn. He left to the coattails not long ago. The view of Doma Castle seems to calm his mind. This way, if you please. Oop. Yo.
Oh, here we go. And, uh, okay, uh, freaking minute. This way, top the broken bridge, you'll be most glad then for your arrival. Ghost has arrived, my lord. You remember when first we shared a view of the castle together? Still under the Gallian's control, perhaps, yet for all of its wickedness, its beauty would not be so easily sullied. It's good to see you, my friend. You must forgive me for foregoing pleasantries, but I guess he is in dire need of our help. Marasek of the abortion resistance. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. As you may have no doubt already know from Lord Yen, my people seek to reclaim our homeland from the Empire. Under their auspices and that of the Eurasian Alliance, we aim to do just that. However, we recently received word that the, that the Ninth Imperial Legion has been making plans of their own. It has long been held the province of Nengsha, Damascus, and Baja in the Iron Griff, yet its Damascan headquarters is to house the bulk of its forces. Until recently, there appeared to be diverting resources and manpower to their forces stationed in Baja. In fact, three battalions are en route as we speak. He thought perhaps a strike before we can fully assemble, but the uh, Bajan resistance lacks the means to drive them off on its own. Aid from the Damascan resistance groups and may have sufficed, sadly even Fran of Lentis Tears has been unable to bring an ending to their infighting. All hope is not lost, however, for Lord Hien has made a most intriguing proposal. Not not an idea, not my own, I must confess. There's our old friend Gosetsu to think. As the Empire tightened its grip on Dora, our people were at a crossroads. Would they lay down and surrender, or stand up and fight? You sought me out, that I could make the spark that lit the fire of rebellion. The same must be done for the Bolgians. They require a standard on which they can rally. Symbol of hope to steal them for what is to come. Lacking a living figurehead such as Lord Tien, our comrades and I, I look to our nation's past for inspiration. There we fought the answer we sought, but Hilder's blades. They were the elite guard of Queen Gunhilder, the zest of weapons blessed by the gods. Their exploits would become legend after defending our people's against the uh, elegance in the third astral era. The strength of their steel were matched only by their dedication to the queen. Should one lose their life in her service, their holy braid would then be passed to a successor. In that time, their title would lend itself to the most renowned sound of their weaponry, the gunblade. But in truth, each member of her, her guard were a matter of a unique weapon. Though these sacred relics long been lost in time, I would see them forged anew. Armed thus, our people would know no fear and drive back our, our oppressors, just as Queen Gunhilda did the elegance. An admittedly lofty and otherwise unattainable goal for one such as I, which is why I traveled far and wide in search of great minds and great heroes who might lend us their aid. Be honored to have you one, have one of your renowned at our side. We value your Borgian commitment to the cause, and I would see their plans come to fruition. Unfortunately, duty demands that I remain here. I could not, in good conscience, know leaving the Empire, yet 
Let it leave knowing the Empire yet threatens the border to Alamigo. Should we choose to accompany the Belgium, might I ask that you also act as a representative of the Eastern Alliance in my stat? Yeah, I'll do what I can. Thank you, my friend. There's aught else you require of the Eastern Alliance. You need only ask. Safe travels to you both. An airship to our base has been prepared for us at the Enclave Dock. Hope to see you there soon. When you have finished your preparations, meet me at the dock and we can be on our way. You teleport to the Enclave? Coming aboard, sir. To Gungos. That you would pay, play host to the Liberator of Doma and Alamigo himself. I did not think think you would be persuaded to help us. A Saljan, leader of the Bajan resistance. Not the best choice job, if I do them to be frank, but I will bear the title all the same. Bloody hells, man. He... Yang inspires such confidence speaking like that. Ah, you're right, Master Geralt. Well, to what are you? <clears throat> well, you're here. Here, won't you come and welcome our guest? Ah, what in the seven hells are you doing here? Oh. You always see us great to see it. Heroes and her finest blacksmith. With the two of you here, our plan is to show to succeed. Would that Gr Queen Gunhilda were here to witness it? Well, as it goes just, just between us, it's only here to pay off my debts for black hearted uh, snake Rowena. You've been selling supplies to the resistance. They happen to mention that they need. We're in need of a smithy, so she would have told him I'd be the greatest bleeding smithy in the realm, with skills that put Bittergart himself to shame. And can't rightly say I've ever if even half of what she's claimed, but I'll do me bet damnedest. Happy to fly me with a good good grub and even better booze, so play along, will you? <laughs> All the relics that we have to do with with Geralt. Geralt, whatever his name is. Now that you're both here, I believe it's time our plans be made clear. Mister? 
Yes, of course. Our goal is to reforge the weapons wielded by Gunhilda's blades, simple in principle, less so in execution. The weapons themselves and most of the text denoted the history of her majesty and her guard were lost in the devastation of the Fourth Humble Calamity. That said, we will manage to obtain certain pieces of information, and coupled with Master Geralt's knowledge and expertise, we have just made strides in reproducing those vaunted blades of Elb. Uh, we've worked out the manner of weapons they wielded, their shape and weight, even the materials needed for me to forge, but they've learned bugger, bugger all about what gives them spirit. It is said Queen Gunhilder etched a holy inscription to each blade, thus granting them the power of the gods. Unfortunately, no records of any such greywings remain, but there is still hope. Though not but pale in imitations, there were once existed replicas which may very well have borne their inscriptions. At last, they were lost when Balsha citadels fell. You know the Balsha incident? Uh, sounds vaguely familiar. A bitter chapter in their history, for it was marked the end of Boja as we knew it. Fifteen summers passed, the Guardians were conducting experiments seeking a means to make contact with the Lesser Moon Dalamut. They believed the satellite to be possessed of immense power, and the lunar transmitter was erected in the hopes of harnessing it. But when the transmitter was activated in a single set, Darumu responded with immense blast of raw energy. The destruction wrought to defy directly. The citadel, the relics of Queen Hilda's kingdom, whom not was left but smoke and ash. We oh, Bain lost though. A citadel's been wiped off the bloody map, I. But there's still a way for us to find these inscriptions, or so I've been told. An explanation, but uh, better left to to one far more knowledgeable. Hey, Makoto. We met her during our expositions with the Return to Evil East Alliance raid series. All right. I'm going to make a quick break while I refresh my beverage. Be right back.
All right. It's good to see you again, Eskis. That I had hoped to accomplish more before your arrival. Uh, I'm sure your help was valuable now as it was aboard the Prima Vista. You're far too kind. If not for your heroism, Remsa and Alba would have would have. Oh. oh uh, from the onset of the order, your endeavor. The onset of our endeavor is abundantly clear that one versed in atheology would be essential. We relayed this, this to the Alliance, who then introduced us to Mugoto. He is said, said to be one of the most brilliant minds from the students of Baldessian. And yet it is my ineptitude that demands your presence here. I'm all but certain that Geralt and I alone would suffice in this, alas. Ahem. <clears throat> The matter she speaks concerns the long-forgotten practice of the holy men who once inhabited these lands. Utilizing uniquely aspected crystals, the seers would be able to provide succor to those with the ailments of the mind. They possess the ability to shape their very memories, removing the, those deemed harmful and replacing them, and that the patient may find some resemblance of peace. I do dismiss the notion with which practices could exist, that is, until the recent excavation unearthed compelling evidence of their work, the crystals we believe that were used in their healing. Unfortunately, we are unable to discern how they were meant to be used. It was at this juncture that we petitioned for Makoto's assistance. Well, alas, made any progress? My initial analysis suggested the crystals were artificially created at some point in the distant past. The materials used suggest they were most likely produced by the ancestral peoples of this area. What's more, their ethereal signature is strikingly similar to the auxiliary activity of brain waves, which, when made to resonate with the distinct frequency NRR type harmonic reverberations of an individual's. Ah, uh, I've done it again, haven't I? I think a simpler approach is in order. Um, every living being is composed of a corporeal ether of the flesh, incorporeal ether of the soul, and ethereal residue of their memories. Were one to be possessed of only corporeal ether, they would, they would be but a walking corpse. And consequently, entities comprised of only incorporeal ether are referred to as layman's terms as ghosts. In either case, they may also retain some of the their residual memories. Ah, zombies and ghosts, I follow. These crystals are able to isolate and resonate with the ethereal signature of the memories. They allow the seers to probe the minds of their patients. Well, that's all in good last, but what if the, their mind ain't what it used to be? Or that they're too deep in their cups to remember what they're looking for? An excellent question, Master Carol. We're all possessed with two types of memory. Explicit and implicit. As their name suggests, explicit memories refer to an active remembrance of previous experience, while implicit memories are acquired and stored passively. For example, when making new acquaintances, their appearance will become part of your explicit memory, allowing you to recall that information. Should a great deal of time pass without meeting, however, such recollection can prove difficult. Yet in that moment, your mind also records also takes record of the sounds sounds and smells of the location, the temperature, and so on. Hmm, perhaps a demonstration would better explain this phenomenon. We need some sort of bell? Thankfully, that will not be necessary. When I first told of the seers and their practices, I was immediately reminded of your ability to peer into the past. I believe these people were blessed with a similar gift, and it is for that reason that you were chosen. They were chosen to serve as seers. 
Though I too am possessed with the Echo, I lack the ability to peer in the past as you do, and thus have been unable to wield the power of these crystals. That's why we called you here. Till now, I could not, could do not but posit theories. With your help, however, I may now put them to the proof. And you, Master Geralt, will be my first text test subject. We have to convince Geralt to... As it goes, I would like you to recall the last time you experienced the echo. Concentrate on that feeling. Master Geralt, I need you to recall a memory of the past. Maybe anything you'd like. You better not go poking around in there digging up uh, something unsavory like you. Unsavory like you hear, lass. Please, Master Geralt, focus. This is most unexpected. For some reason I cannot e yet explain, it appears the Echo has allowed me to accompany you into this memory. You're a skilled smith, Geralt. There's no denying it. But you hold, but you hold money as well as your liquor. Well, that bloody good in money if you can't spend it. Man has to live a little, Rowena. Aye, I wouldn't... Uh, it wouldn't hurt for a man to use his head, neither. With all that talent of yours, I reckon you can, could have amassed a small fortune by now. Could have had you been, had been you smithing at the syndicate instead of Godbert. If you, if I'd ever wanted to be anything like that doltering old half-dressed. I didn't realize my memory was so sharp. As you can see, implicit memory is surprisingly comprehensive. From the clear skies and ocean waves down to the exact words of your conversation, everything to appears to have been perfectly preserved. You, you weren't listening to that, were you? Every time someone gives you advice, you turn around and do the, uh, do the complete sodding opposite. I used to like that rebellious streak of yours, but now I see that you're just a bloody idiot. <sighs> Honestly, I don't know what I ever saw in you. Whatever it is you, you think you saw, it ain't as if I've changed since then. And you haven't neither. Still as beautiful as the day we met. No, oh, hold on a minute. I ain't never said anything like that. I swear on me mug of ale. Implicit memories, while quite comprehensive, are not always true to fact. In fact, the case of painful or otherwise undesirable experiences, they can be obfuscated to protect oneself from hard truths. Your perception of reality can also distort them as well, even when, th when first committed to the mind. Then, as pa time passes, such distortions can grow. Happy memories become more joyous, and bad ones all the more bitter. Explicit memory is particularly sensitive to such misinterpretations of, of events. For men, 
for man to want to remember that is most convenient for his worldview. That is why we seek the implicit, for there we must most like to find the truth. The truth, Winnie and I were just here a week ago. Don't tell me my memory is that bleeding unreliable. A <laughs> self-imposed delusion, perhaps. As I said before, the mind is always concealing painful memories. I ain't feeling so well, if you'll excuse me. As you can see, these crystals allow us to choose specific points in a person's past to observe as well. Unlike the echo, however, what we see will always... Unlike the echo, however, what we see will not always be as it really was. Yet there still remains the matter of finding one who has seen the replica weapons and their inscriptions. At this present juncture, we might as well be looking for a ghost. After the Guardian invasion of Borgia, it is all but cut off from the world. None has allowed in or out, meaning all of its residents, and likely any who may glimpse the weapons, died when the Citadel was destroyed. Hmm, what about soldiers stationed there? who were away at the time of the incident. Bah! Even if we were able to find them, I thought they would be persuaded to cooperate. Okay. Makoto is getting an echo. And, of course, she drags me along. No, please. Lord Varus, No! Saw too. My visions, they are not of what has come to pass, but what is yet to be. Would it be the crystal allowed us to share my vision as well? Milgoto, Esikos, you two are right. Yeah, we did an echo vision of Sid. He was talking about Lord Varys. Sid? Sid Garland? Oh, not the monster behind the meteor project? Come to think of it, Yugri mentioned that Doma and the Eorzean Alliance have been receiving reports from Garland Ironworks. I thought that the company would uh, should use such a moniker with happenstance, but you mean to say Sid Garland owns this, this company? Son of my desfat non Garland. Leaves? He must be summoned at once. If he was at the Citadel prior to its destruction, it's quite possible that he may have seen the replicas. Fate is indeed a cruel mistress, pinning our hopes on a guardian. Yet, we get that bastard Midas, no less. There truly no other way. Barstagin, Sergeant, please. Very well. I only hope our fellow comrades can forgive us. Please, bring us this seed garland to the people of Borja for all of Isabad.
Um, <laughs> you kind of don't need to do that. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I'm great and everything. But, like, not necessarily worship. This type of worship where they kind of unsettling. That you would know Sid God is hardly surprising. I only hope he is not as engrossed in his work as he cannot find the time to assist us. I will not keep you, unless, of course, there is something you wish to ask me. No, it's fine. I do not imagine he sympathizes with our plight, but from what I, re I gather, he has no love for the Empire either. If it will suffice in persuading him to aid us, then so be it. I hear there is an engineer stationed at Rago's Reach. Perhaps you can begin your search for Garland there. Honestly, I don't know why I don't have uh, Sid's Link Pearl. Hey, aren't you Eskos, savior of Azorcia, liberator of Alamico, and so on and so forth? My name is Lija, newest recruit to the Ironworks. What can I do for you? Hey, I'm looking for Sid. The chief, too busy for by half, according to Jesse. Between you and me, though, I think it's a load of... Oh, do go on. A load of... I was saying that those load off our, your shoulders there would be, knowing the chief is back from wherever he's going. Speaking of which, Esco said he wanted to speak with him about... What was he again? God damn it, Lilja. You might better hear better than most, but you're a terrible listener. <sighs> you mind starting again from the beginning? Yeah, we're looking for Sid because of the budget resistance, looking for, for things with the... Exposition. See, well, you just missed them. They reuse walls, will do for maintenance, and you had a mind to oversee it personally. That said, any matters concerning you are top priority. I'll see if I can reach them. I take it this is an average day for you. Must be hard. Always having to put a brave face for what you thrust into danger, people tugging you this way and that, like some sort of errand boy. Huh? No, no, you don't appreciate what you do, do for us. Goodness, no, I do. In fact, well, you see, uh, I'm something of a fan. I knew the Ironworks worked with you on occasion, but I didn't think I'd have the chance to meet you in person. Can I, can I shake your hand? Lija, Sid just, uh, Lija, Sid just being back took off, load off my shoulders, not yours. Don't you have work to do? Oh, right, work, duty calls, but hopefully we'll meet again soon. She says he'll meet you at the Domino Enclave. Not the most convenient locations, but it'll have to do, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's fine. One more thing. The budget incident is something of a sore spot for the chief. Even if it was an accident, most people outside the Empire remember it as a massacre. The chief tried to put his stop to his father's experiments, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. Even now, he still blames himself for it all. I, mean, I should have tried harder, you'd say. Could have saved him. Could have saved them all. All that genius and the man can't find a way to forgive himself. So, if you're aiming to go digging through the past, be careful. I dread to think what demons he's got locked away in his brain for this. You can count on me.
She's tough as a Magitek ar armor plane, which she wants to be, but her heart's in the right place. Champs, he's always so busy. As for you, I'm not mistaken, I won't keep you any longer. Best of luck! Oh. Chief said he'd be meeting you at the Domain Enclave, didn't he? Well, best not keep him waiting. Oh, jeez. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. They just take the eighth right, but oh well. Hope oh, people got Cerberus as mounts. Hey, have you seen Sid? Master Garland, yes, I've seen him recently pace it about the Enclave. If you wait here, I'm sure he'll come by before long. Look at the devil. It's hard to believe this place was, until recently, occupied by the Gallians. The man has long ago to go, long way to go before it regains its former glory, but they're off to a good start. Bigger which, so I've heard. The Bajans wish to follow the Domain's lead. I plan to do what I can to help. In fact, I've already spoken to Lord Hien and agreed to divert part of the Ironworks resources to assist in Domain in Doma's reconstruction. The offer seemed to have taken him by surprise, and I assured him that in addition to the Ironworks' commitment to freedom through technology, I had my own reasons to do reverse the destruction wrought by the Empire. While it's true that I eventually defected, I played no small part in the development of Magitech now used by their military. Sometimes it's the treads that... Sometimes it's the threads you can't see that have the strongest eyes, but that I could cut them. And Lord Hien, take your response. Our talks were focused mainly on the reconstruction, as they thought, as we thought it best to wait for their, your arrival to discuss how I might help the Bajans. <sighs> I kind of made my father see reason there would have been no Bajan, Boja incident. But I was powerless to stop him. Hey, cheer up. Yes, you're right. It's time for wallowing in self-pity and a time to action. Plan to do whatever I can for the Bajan Resistance, and they're up against the Ninth Legion. If we're to stand a chance, their allies here in the East won't be enough. We need to, they're going to need all the help they can muster. Not entirely sure what part I'll have to play in all this, but I doubt anything I do now will be enough to atone for my past mistakes. But it means throwing a spanner in the Empire's works, then count me in. Off to Gongos. On speaking about Kota, solo cut scenes will play in sequence. It's recommended you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. All right. I'm going to do this. Because I like cutting these videos in at least two and a half hour blocks. We're at 224. That's good enough. I'm going to drop the stream, bring it back up. Like literally really quick. End stream.